I'm I mean this as as a compliment, but I was almost a little bit nervous about meeting you today because sometimes in films you <laughs> you play people that aren't the nicest of characters, and obviously in the Dare, that's another one to add to the list. He's not not the nicest bloke, is he? This one? No, no, he's sort of a dysfunctional dad to yeah. say the least. Yeah, no, it's not. No, I know it's weird. I play all these kind of like, well, I often play a lot of particularly. Um, fucked up people and uh it's uh it's um weird because i'm actually quite quite sweet man <laughs> I, got I was little, gonna ask about that kids, i got a baby i got yeah. like an 18 month old i got two two two, two well one of them's 21 18 mm-hmm. you know i was just on holiday with um uh, i'm just like a normal kind of i'm actually fairly gentle most people call me a pretty gentle person and yet i find it very easy to play yeah incredibly ungentle people to say yeah. the least because in this instance, I mean, you're working with a young actor. I'm just wondering about how you navigate a character like yours with someone so young. Do you almost have to reassure him off every time that there was a cut just to say, like, smile at him and make sure he knows you're not really bad? Or does that actually, for someone that young, did that spoil the illusion and could that affect his performance? How did you kind of navigate that? Um, I, you know, I, I, I think Giles and I talked about it a little bit, Giles, the director, um, to to find a balance you know because we did want because it was he'd done a a couple of jobs before but he was you know obviously just because of his age he was fairly you know new to the profession um so we wanted to keep a little bit of we didn't want him to get too comfortable because we obviously wanted a bit of that in there but at the same time obviously wanted him to feel comfortable enough to enjoy himself so Mm -hmm. i kind of found a balance i i didn't want him i didn't want to become his best buddy just because i thought that might not help but at the same time, like you said, there was definitely, I had to kind of, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> let him know I'm not really like that. Yeah. And, uh, and, and also, he was an incredible young actor. I mean, really from the beginning, um, his name is uh, Mitchell Norman. He, um, he was just immediately very, very in, into, uh, you know, into the part and was very good. We just knew. And I actually remember thinking, yeah, I got up my game. I got to make sure I'm on it during this because this this kid's good. He's and he does a great job. I mean, it's a difficult role um, for I forget how old he was at the time, but you know, 14 maybe something like that. You know, it's not easy to mm-hmm. to do that. He did brilliantly. I mean, because you mentioned obviously that you're quite different, obviously, <laughs> to some of the characters you play. But I was wondering about getting into this industry. Was it something you had to adapt to? Did you start playing these characters and getting picking up a bit of a kind of reputation of being really good at it, and then just go, well, obviously that's what people want. That's that's me showing showcasing my own skills and talents, and then start going for roles like that. Or was that always your kind of your 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 um well, prerogative from the start? Did you always think, right, that's what I want to do, or did you just go with the flow? Yeah, I just go with the flow. I mean, I still do that, really. I mean, I love playing all kinds of different. I mean, I tend to, I think, partly just, you know, my face. You know, I mean, it's it's pretty scary damn face. So, you know, that helps, you know, casting. And so, I, you know, I love playing those roles. And they're often some of the best roles in any project. Um, but I don't go personally go, oh, it's a bad guy. You know, get me that next bad guy. You know, I love when I get a chance to, and I do occasionally get opportunities to play um good guys love interest never played a love interest wouldn't mind doing that once playing the romantic lead in a rom-com but i do get the occasional you know i did i did a film recently uh, arthur and merlin and i played merlin which was you know which was a nice change and often sometimes my bad guys aren't complete psychotic um you know idiots uh total nutcases and sometimes there's some variation in those that there's a little a little goodness in them a little more yeah. a- moral ambiguity yeah yeah no you, you you're definitely you, you've always been really good at just throwing in a little shade of vulnerability into these characters which is essential a lot of the time for these roles i think so too i you know no one is completely evil like the idea that in fact i've been offered roles where i've read the script and i thought you know the, it was just the character is just there's no reason for him to be like this he's just evil for the sake of the script or whatever and i've not done many of those because i there's no interest in me i mean everybody even evil characters or bad guys you know they have the 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 reason behind it is isn't you know is often good they think they're the good guy in their story they're the good guy you know and um except for maybe psychotics and i played those but uh you know so there's always a lot of the ambiguity to these you know to the to the bad guys i think personally 
do, do you think that actually playing people like that gives you quite an interesting kind of comprehension of society? Because I guess you're, you've had to study and, and understand through your profession the darker sides to, to people and to mankind. Do you think in some ways that's given you quite, a, quite a, an interesting outlook on, on the world and on, man, and on humanity? Um, that's a good question. I think what it's done, you know, I'm, early on I had an amazing um, uh, teacher, acting teacher, um, his name was Sam Kogan. He was a Russian, passed away quite a while ago. But, uh, you know, Stanislavski based teacher, amazing man. And I remember he used to quote, and, you know, I should, I should look this up and remember who it was, but it was um, uh, uh, a, a, a Greek or Roman um, philosopher that said, you know, no human emotion is alien to me. Um, and, I, and I think that's true that, like, as an actor, you know, we realize that no, nothing human is alien to, in, to us. So that even the idea of playing, you know, on some characters that can commit horrible things. I mean, just to go into the mind space of people who commit terrible, you know, just terrible things, uh, it doesn't frighten me. At some point, I remember, you know, as a young actor thinking, it's just my responsibility to go into this mindset that most people, when they start thinking, could I do that to a child? Or, you know, in this film, for example, could I do that to a child? You know, I, I don't, I know that every human being has it in their imagination to do it, but most of us stop ourselves. Yes. Um, and I, I don't, I know it doesn't frighten me to go into that place. And I think that's a real, you know, that's a real privilege really more than anything else. It's just a privilege that I, you know, and a responsibility to, to do that, which, which I, you know, I do enjoy. <laughs> and uh, in regards to the day, what was the, <laughs> what was the initial attraction to this? I mean, because obviously as someone who's quite prolific and seems to be so busy all the time, I just wondered how you picked your roles. And, and yeah, in the case of this movie, what was it that made you think, right, this is, this is what I want to get involved in. Yeah, I think um, first and foremost, it was, a, it's often the director. Like I love to meet the director um, before I do a role in the script. I mean, I read this, I mean, it's, incredibly violent and there's some horrific scenes in it um often actually ones that i'm not in or the, you know i don't want to give anything away but there's just a whole horrific section to this and you know that kind of torture porn film doesn't necessarily thrill me too much i'm not a big fan of those but because of the the storyline that we're talking about with you know my son and and, and uh and the rest of it um that i really loved and i love this character's kind of warped idea of fatherhood and on all of that and then more than anything i um i could tell it was going to be terrifying and I, I knew it was going to be a good film just from reading it but when i met giles um right away i just knew he was he's the kind of director i like to work with he was an actor at one time he's very open to ideas and lets you you know it lets you do all kinds of experiments with it and just kind of be free uh, and he's, he, I just liked him as a person as well. So immediately, once I sat down, we had coffee somewhere, I can't remember now, and talked about the script and talked about how he saw it and how I saw it. And I was, you know, I called my agent right afterwards and said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I want to do this. This would be fun. Um, the next thing I know, I was in Bulgaria. For a while, shooting away. Yeah, because I mean, I was wondering too, because I mean, when you're working kind of genre movies, they're often, they take place all over the world, often in like Europe and stuff like that. I just wondered how you found lockdown and kind of this kind of period of time at home. Because I guess for yourself, being such a prolific actor, you're someone that's always traveling. Have you quite enjoyed being at home? Or have you been quite restless? <laughs> yeah, that's a fantastic question. I'll tell you, last year, I don't think I was home for five days straight. Uh -huh. And I've just done, well, it's almost six months, right? Yeah. Now, since March. Um, in fact, right before lockdown, um, I was about to get on a plane to go to New Jersey. And then from New Jersey, I was going to go to the Dominican Republic to film something. In Jersey, I was going to do a convention. And I did 50 flights last year, I think I worked out. Um, good air miles. So, yeah. yeah. So the change is... It's been, I enjoyed it for a while. I mean, I loved it because I, you know, I got a young kid here and yeah, I was able to get my guitar playing back up to speed and do some things I wanted to do. But now I'm, now I'm ready, ready to go back. I did a little work uh, last month. I did some, some work in Paris, but I tell you, it's, I'm not, I need to keep, I love, I love just being busy and I love working and I love traveling to the, you know, I've had some you know, amazing experiences to working all over the place. And, and I love working with people. I think when I was young, what really attracted me to being an actor was the experience of working together with people. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I love most of all. You know, when I did my first play, it wasn't so much being on stage and, um, 
and acting in front of people and getting all the you know applause. What I loved was all the rehearsals. So I loved like going with Giles on the dare, you know, working with him and having a relationship with him and then, you know, working with the uh, young Mitchell. And that to me is why I love and what I've been missing for, you know, I'm ready for, to start again. So slowly the biz is getting back going now. So, you know, yeah. hopefully we'll be up and running soon ish. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because I've actually found recently, I've been thinking about all the things I've kind of missed and it is just being around a lot of people at one time and kind of that. No, yeah. I don't just mean like, a, I don't mean strangers. I mean, generally people, you know, colleagues, family, just kind of yeah. gatherings of, of people. I just miss it so much. Yeah. Yeah. Or even just like for a while, they're just seeing people on the street, you know, just being able to like, you know, a little nod to people, you know, you go public transport, you know, haven't really been doing that too much and all those things. I actually love all that. That's why I love living in London. But mm. Yeah. We should be back at some point. <laughs> how, how is it? Because I mean, obviously you've been in some huge sort of movies. And I mean, obviously in Game of Thrones, you, you played one of the, for, for a while, you played one of the most integral characters in that series. But obviously under all that makeup, does it allow you to kind of move around in London, as you said, quite freely without being stopped every five minutes? And that must have been yeah. a relief yeah. of Game of Thrones because with a series that yeah. big, if, that, if we could make your face out in that character, you wouldn't be able to walk around Soho for 30 seconds without being stopped. I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it's good. Um, that is definitely, I can go into Starbucks and no one bothers me. Um, I, uh, uh, but, you know, I get occasionally caught, you know, people people come up when uh, some of the other jobs, you know, Rob Zombies or um, Batman or whatever. Or, or, you know, I'll tell you what mostly happens is people just kind of stare at me. Yeah. And they just <laughs> so they think, I know that guy. And they're thinking that they kind of might have met me once or something. Because I saw pop up in so many things. I think that what people just kind of recognize my face from seeing me, you know, there's so many shows that I just usually pop up, do something really bad and then die. So I think they just don't remember. Was that guy, was my plumber last week? Who fixed <laughs> or, you know. Well, it was funny because I was at the Toronto Film Festival about two years ago and I remember there was hordes of people waiting to go and see movies on that kind of the main street. So all film fans and Andy Serkis was just walking around and no one stopped yeah. him. And I just thought to yeah, myself, of oh, of course, yeah. that's because he, <laughs> he's so yeah. rarely his own face. Um, yeah. But my final yeah. question, because I know I'm sort of running out of time, was just if you've got anything coming up, if you, I know obviously it's a tough time, but have you got any projects in the pipeline that you're, you're looking forward to? Yeah, I mean, there's some that I have coming and there's one thing I did that I, I, I can't mention, but I did do a show um a movie called off season it's coming out um sometime next year it was a good little horror film um young director named mickey keating he was like really hot upcoming guy um i got tremor seven coming out i think it's called tremor shrieker island <laughs> which is great fun we shot that in uh in thailand uh right in november and that that's fun and then of course we got the dare coming out um in uh in the uk uh, in october so it's um yeah and then there's i think there's a lot of tv stuff this well, i again popping up there's loads of things like i'll often go and just shoot something for like a week and then i forget about it and then i think oh yeah that's come out <laughs> i pop up there's a bunch of tv shows but i won't take up time name it. well best a lot of that because i know i always like it when i see you pop up even if that does mean okay. sometimes a restless night <laughs> 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 but brilliant thanks so much for your time today anyway, richard it's been a pleasure uh, Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!